Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. In the series I'm putting together, we started off on Mars at Olympus Base, we got into orbit, and we are heading back to Earth. So let's go ahead and switch camera views here and dive right back into it. All right, let me unpause. So at the, uh, at the end of the last video, we completed our ejection burn to go from Mars back to Earth. So now really all we can do is just begin warping time forward because we've got a long way to go. So let me think about this. So 61271, that's where we are now. And do we have any idea what our arrival is going to be? I don't remember. So what I'll use for now as a reference point is the PET. And I'm just going to warp time forward until we are about half that number. So when the PET is around, let's just say 11M, 11, 11.5M, 11, 11 we'll look into doing some kind of mid-course correction. All right, so with that said, let's just go ahead and start warping time forward, get away from Mars. And we come out of time warp just for a second and just kill rotation just to try to get rid of as much oscillating around as I can. And now we'll go to full time warp. And yeah, we're just going to uh, warp time forward, keeping an eye on our PET here. Um, and this actually sometimes switches from Earth to Sun, Earth to Sun, depending on how your orbital projections are coming on. So we'll have to, if this suddenly changes, it doesn't mean that we crashed or anything. It just means that the uh, the reference has probably changed to something that we're not wanting. But we've got a ways to go. Uh, we're currently at 20M, and we're looking for about 11.5M before we worry about uh, doing any kind of mid-course correction. Something else we can keep an eye on as we're watching the, uh, the time warp You'll notice that the PEA, it'll oscillate in and out, in and out, in and out. Like currently, it's it was just going down, now it's going back out. It'll get to some maximum, and then it'll go back down to some minimum, and it'll go back and forth like that. Uh, one of the things that Dimitri uh, kind of clued me in on, let me know about, is that it's probably best to do your mid-course correction when this oscillation reaches its minimum. Also when that corresponds to the time that you're planning on doing your mid-course correction. So I'm not really worrying about this oscillation until I get close to that 11.5M number that I was talking about. But once we get close to that, then I'm going to watch this oscillation. And I will, you know, as you can see now, it's it's bottoming out, bot it's, it's heading down again. But then it's probably going to go back up as it is now. So maybe on the maybe the next time it bottoms out, we'll we'll do a mid course correction. But again, I'm really going to watch this first, and I'm not going to worry about this at all until this is at least 11.5. So we just crossed 12.5, and now we're getting down into the 11s. Okay, so this, yeah, this is gonna whenever whenever our PEA bottoms out the next time, then I'll do a mid course correction. So we're currently at 450, 500M, 600M, and we just topped out. Now we're going back in the other direction. So the next time this bottoms out, we will do a mid-course correction. So 400, okay. So we're, I can see that it's uh, just it's bottoming out, bottoming out again. All right, so the way we're going to do our mid-course correction, we're going to use uh, the delta velocity program in connection with the map program, just the way we did the burn from Mars to Earth. So I'm gonna turn off the burn vector, and I'm going to zero out all these variables. I wish there was a zero button, but there's not. So we're gonna have to page over, and we're just, I'm just gonna set everything to zero. Next, next set to zero. Okay, so now we're saying that we don't want to do a burn of any kind. And now I'm going to turn the plan on so that whatever I input now on this side will have an impact over here. Uh, we're in the middle of oblivious space somewhere, so it doesn't matter if we do the burn now, five minutes from now, 10 minutes from now. But I personally always like to program in the future. <laughs> so I'm going to set this time for 300 seconds, which is five minutes from now. And that means we have uh, five real-time minutes to set up this burn. Of course, we won't actually use all that time. We'll time warp through most of it, but that's just a number I like to use. 
All right now we'll start playing with forward velocity plane change and inward just to see what happens. All right, so again, we're watching the PEA. So let's see if we put in forward velocity. And I lost something over here. Let me let me set this back to zero. And target Earth, reference Sun. So that's all correct. Let me shut this plan off for a second. Turn the plan back on. And what is this referencing? So I have everything selected that I want to have selected. Let me see over here. Source, reference, oh, okay, hang on. Reference, sun. I don't know if I have to target the earth, but I will. So let me start this over. So TEJ set 300 seconds. And all right, now we'll start over. So let me turn this plan off and back on again. All right, now, so if I take out forward velocity, that's, let me go to a higher adjustment. Let me actually set this to zero. So if I add in forward velocity, it is helping. So how much would I have to put in? In order to get the PEA down. So, um, okay, so I'm thinking there might be a better variable than forward velocity. Let's try inward outward. So that is bringing the PEA down. This feels like a lot of inward, but eh. 80, that, yeah, that, that feels like a big burn for a mid-course correction. So I'm seeing like 131 is the lowest. All right, let's combine inward with um, forward velocity now. And that's getting us back home. Let's see if we can take out some of this. Let me see how much of this I can get away with removing. And then if I come up here, can I remove any of this? No. Okay, so let's do it this way. Um, we're gonna need a bit more inward so the total burn is about 70 meters per second. And again, that puts us pretty close to the center of the planet, which I think is still um, a good estimation based on the distance that we, you know, we're still halfway home. So this is gonna oscillate a lot more. All right, so let's bring up the burn vector page and just auto burn this. I'm gonna just let IMFD take care of it. I'm not being fuel efficient here with my maneuvers. Um, you really should, if you're going for minimum if you're going for maximum fuel efficiency you should uh, use the control thrusters and rotation and then use a little bit of time warp to bring the vessel around but again that's just not the goal of this mission so so I'm being a bit sloppy let me turn the plan off okay so the PA has this at negative 4.0 M and I don't feel the need to do any kind of correction beyond that so now let's go ahead and warp time forward. Let's bring the PEA down to, let's cut this number in half, so 4.5. And we will watch our, um, our PEA again and make a decision at that time. So let's warp time forward. So we're at 8.5. So quite a ways to go. And you can see the, you know, even IMFD, this Mars to Earth, it, you know, the, the, it just doesn't hold. I think there's just too much. I think there's too much going on between the Earth Moon system for there for this to be accurate. Yeah, it pains me that these MFDs aren't a bit better, but eh. yeah, I, I don't know what it would be. I don't know what would be required to to make them better because obviously the stuff that you know NASA uses it. it it's obviously far more sophisticated than this. Even, I would imagine, even in the Apollo days, they had stuff that was light years ahead of this software. So, all right, anyway, so we're getting close to 4.5. So I'm going to watch the PEA now. I'm going to look for that low point. Okay, it's climbing again. So let's go back to real time, and we're going to just rinse and repeat. I'm going to turn off the burn vector. 
I'm referencing the sun, I'm targeting the earth. So I'm going to turn the plan on and we're going to zero out these variables. And we're going to say that we're going to do this burn in five minutes. And let's see what we get with um, adding in forward velocity. Does that help? Does it hurt? Or does it get closer to home or further away? It's getting us closer to a point. So the low number that I see is 35. So we'll start with that and then we'll see what inward does for us. Helping, but I feel like it could be better. Let me try plane change this time. That's doing a bit for us as well. And as we get closer and closer to Earth, I probably don't want to drive the vessel so far inside the planet. But I think we're still far enough out that we at least want to be at least at the surface of Earth. So 6.4, 6.3, so that's the low point. So let's try here. That's not good. That's better. That's much better. Let's bring this adjustment down to one. Let's let's go with that. That's pretty good. That's pretty close to the surface. So page over, burn vector, auto burn, and time warp to get through the burn. And turn off the plan so we can watch it in real time. So about 10 seconds until the burn commences. Take a sip of water while we're waiting. And here comes the burn. All right, so that's trending upwards. Let's go ahead and do just a minor correction here. We'll go ahead and push ourselves a little bit under the earth. Let's go with about that much. And once again, we'll cut this number in half roughly. Let's go down to 2M and see what kind of mid-course corrections we need at that point. Let me just do a quick oxygen check. I think we have plenty. Yeah, 203 days. Just wasn't sure if we'd end up getting an oxygen warning here at some point. Okay, so let's warp time forward. And again, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go all the way down to 2M and you can see this just fell apart like it sometimes does. Not quite sure why that happens, but here it comes back. So looking for 2M, and I lost my numbers again. Switched pages on me. I don't know why it does that. Um, you can see because now it's showing 36M, which is clearly wrong, but let me just warp time forward a little bit. What I can also do, let me, while going forward just at 100x, let me bring up orbit on this side, and let me reference Earth just so I have another reference point. So 2.4M, until I get my data back over here, because right now this is all wonky. Okay, so we're at the 2M point, close to it. Let me just go forward a little bit more. Okay, we're currently referencing Earth PEA 14. I'm getting fairly close to home now, so I gotta watch my time warps. So this is trending down. Eight. Four. Let me come back to real time for a second. So currently the PEA predicted is about 600 kilometers. Um, let me go down to 1M. And just kind of check in here. Uh, we're getting close-ish enough to Earth that these numbers should start reflecting reality a bit more. Okay, so let's get in with 
let's uh, as our next point of reference let's get within side of Earth's sphere of influence even if it's just 0 0.01 but that'll be our next reference point there it is okay and let's go ahead and do uh, what will hopefully be our penultimate mid-course correction our second to last all right let's go ahead and bring up delta velocity program on this side bring up the burn vector and we'll clear out these variables set the zero next set the zero next set to zero and again we'll give ourselves five minutes so we'll set for 300 and turn on the plan all right so now we're just looking to uh, get our target PEA and I have to think about this one so coming back from the moon I like to have a target PEA of 60 kilometers pretty much exactly coming back from the moon we have an arrival uh, arrival velocity of really really close to 11,000 meters per second when you reach entry interface coming back from Mars we're going to be going faster than that so that means we probably want to be a little higher than 60 kilometers I'm gonna say I'm gonna shoot for 65 what I'll do actually when we get in fairly close I'm gonna actually do a save point because I actually am not quite sure what the uh, target altitude should be coming back from Mars because we're probably going to be closer to uh, 12 kilometers than 11 so all right so but for now let's 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 shoot for 65 I don't know if we're close enough to uh, to dial it in exactly but let's just see what we can get at this point so very very small mid-course correction in fact we probably don't even need to bother with um, with setting it up this way we can probably just handle it by bumping translation thrusters but we'll go ahead and let the delta velocity program take care of it um, rotation and go ahead and try to line this up though a little bit in fact what we can do we'll do this let me just get lined up where the delta velocity program is telling me we should be lined up at and then we're just going to handle this burn manually so that we can get closer to that target number of 65. All right, so we're going to turn this off. We're not going to, we're not going to do auto burn here. We're going to turn off the plan. And now I'm just going to use forward translation to get the PA where I want. That's rotation. Translation. Okay, so about 65 is what I'm guesstimating. So we'll go with uh, we'll go with we'll go with that. Okay, so that takes care of most of the mid-course corrections. Let me go ahead and pause the simulation, switch camera views here over to the big screen, and when we come back, we will complete the rest of the time warp over to Earth. Probably have I'm thinking one more mid-course correction when we get in, you know, relatively close to Earth, like when Earth's uh, gravitational influence is about. 0.5 maybe 0.6 something like that we'll probably have to bump the translation thrusters again to get the PEA right where we want it and I think that'll also be a really good point to do a save so that if we if I don't dial that uh, altitude in quite right and end up burning or skipping out or something that I can resume from that save point so that's gonna be the plan uh, hope you enjoyed watching this and I will see you in the next part